Did giants once roam the earth, as mentioned in the book of Genesis? What would discoveries of such beings have on the theory of evolution? We will read of a discovery made in King Solomon's cave of a giant over nine feet tall. Two news sources document the discovery, one in 1873, which is the Sacramento Daily Union, the other from 1874 called The Colonist. The link to both articles is in the description. According to the Sacramento Daily Union, published in November of 1873, the beginning of the article states, There were giants in those days, as mentioned in the Bible. The mighty miners of old times in Montana. Strange discoveries, a verifiable petrified giant. I send you by today's mail a hasty sketch of our new discovery. I have just returned from King Solomon's cave up Orfer Gulch. Yesterday morning, four of us determined to satisfy ourselves, if possible, of the extent of the cave. The party was made up of Louis Witter, geologist Bernard, Abby Eccles, and your informant. The article says they reached the cave at 3 o'clock, walked precisely 400 feet into the passage of the cave when suddenly they emerged into a magnificent chamber. Its measurements were 35 feet high, the length of the room 86 feet, and the width 54 feet. Discovered was a fireplace at the right of the entrance of the room where several small pieces of charcoal were picked up. Leaning against the wall was a huge plate of copper, 57 inches in length, 36 inches in width, and about a fourth of an inch in thickness. We took this to be a shield, they said, as near the center were two holes eight inches apart, used for inserting a strap through which to slip an arm. It was rough by hand, as the marks of a sledge or other heavy instrument were plainly visible on it. About ten feet beyond where the shield was found, and eight feet from the floor, was a cavity in the wall ten feet in length and over four feet high. Placing a few large stones one upon another, Bernard climbed up and held his light in to see the extent of the opening, but he immediately turned toward us with a frightened look and it was some seconds before he could explain the nature of the discovery he had made, two of the party being hoisted up to take the dimensions of the monstrous man. The giant was nine feet, seven and a half inches in length, and 38 inches across his breast. A helmet of brass or copper of gigantic proportions was upon his head, with the corrosive elements of time, sealing it to his brow. Near this rare specimen were found two mammoth spearheads, 18 inches in length and 6 inches in width at the widest point. One of them was intended to be fastened in a handle, after the fashion of an arrowhead, while the other had a socket of silver into which to insert a huge pole or handle. Other items discovered in the cave were pictures of three ships, executed with a sharp-pointed instrument. Opposite side of the room from this, we discovered a huge flat stone leaning against the wall. On the smooth surface of this was also the engraving of a ship much larger than the others, and near the bow, the picture of a large man, with spear in hand apparently made to represent an explorer, landing and taking possession of some country. But the giant we have discussed is not the only specimen the explorers came across. Another room was discovered upon moving a huge stone that led into a chamber 35 feet square. In it lay the bones of men at least 9 feet in stature. Also discovered was a quartz crusher and several tools. The explorers concluded that these giant men must have been mining when a slide from the mountain entombed them.